again. I'm going to think of a standard introduction because my introductions are always super awkward. Um, but let's just jump right into it. I recently finished making this shirtwaist in an 1890s style, or in 1893 to 1897 is when this would have been uh, the height of fashion, um, but you probably would have seen stuff like it as late as 1906, um, just on people who are kind of out of date. Um, but yeah, I recently finished making it. I'm very pleased with how it came out. Um, from being nitpicky, the collar is a little bit kitty want this, but I think it's okay. Um, but yeah, I'm quite pleased with how it came out. Uh, I started with a truly Victorian pattern. Um, I can't remember which one it was. It was 1894 shirtwaist pattern, um, but I heavily uh, altered it. The original pattern called for a waistband and a peplum, um, and I and it also had a gathered back. I got rid of the gathered back in favor of this fitted back, which I copied from one of my antique shirts in my collection. Um, I also got rid of the waistband and the peplum and lengthened the whole thing. It also, the pattern had these weird kind of points. The yoke came down into, uh, into a weird point right here. Um, but I didn't like that. I thought it emphasized certain things a little bit too much. And um, it also uh, created this weird like kick right here. Um, this kind of a bizarre pleat. So I decided to just cut it into this graceful curve here instead. Um, I also lengthened the sleeve, so I did a lot of, I made a lot of changes to the um, original pattern. Um, but yeah, I'm quite happy with how it came out, but there is a problem. There is something, something missing from it. Um, let's see if we can figure out what it is by looking at some photos. Yes, that is right. All of the photos from this period have very full sleeves. And while mine have the potential to be very full, they want to lie quite flat. So, what we are going to do today is make some 1890s sleeve bustles. Now, I have a magazine, a fashion magazine from 1895 that I'll show you in just a second, and it has two, it's selling two different types of sleeve bustle. So we're gonna look at those. So this is the Coke and Company fashion catalog for the spring and summer of 1896. And in it is, it's quite fragile, uh, not in the best shape, but in it is this piece of parchment paper for, um, mail away orders and it has an advertisement right here for a sleeve bustle um, and it is captioned uh, a Parisian sleeve bustle black and white regular price 18 cents but they are being sold for the very low price in this catalog of just 10 cents a pair so there's this kind it looks sort of like a spring or a slinky. Um, and then there's also an advertisement for another style. Aha. So then this is the other style that's advertised. So this looks like it's made out of like a, almost a wire mesh that's looped back on itself and secured here that just kind of fills out the sleeve. And this is um, captioned, new shoulderette or sleeve bustle made of extra fine light steel covered with silesia. A large size at 39 cents a pair, medium size at 19 cents a pair. So I have two options. Um, I think I'm going to go with this one uh, for several reasons. First of all, I think that this one will give a better shape than the other one will. And um, second of all, I don't really, I feel like I can 
This one will just be a lot easier to make than the other one. Um, and I also just think that this one looks much more interesting. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go with this one. Now I believe that this it doesn't say what it's made out of, but based on the photographs I've seen of extant ones, they're not very common. Um, so there are just a few photographs of um, the same set of sleeve bustles, because uh, there, there just are not very many of them. But from what I can tell, they seem to be made out of uh, wire, uh, like a flexible wire. Uh, I do not have the capability to do wire working um, and metal working. So I think I'm going to make mine out of um, fabric covered uh, synthetic whalebone. Um, that is something, I know that they had um, celluloid boning and synthetic whalebone back in the 1890s. I think that the stuff that I'm going to be able to find is not going to be made out of celluloid, seeing as celluloid is incredibly flammable, um, it's not really used for very many for really anything anymore, other than ping pong balls. Um, so, but I know in, in spirit it is uh, relatively accurate, even if it's not quite, if it's not quite on point, it, it's, it kind of gets the idea across well enough, I think, to be considered accurate. So um, I'm going to construct, and I think I'll put a picture up here as well of uh, like a reference photo. So it's going to be constructed of several ribs of the um, of the synthetic whalebone that um, will attach them. I'm still not quite sure how they're going to attach to the shoulder, how I'm going to put them on, um, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. So yeah, let's go and get the uh, synthetic whalebone. All right, so we're back from the store. I got four yards of this synthetic whalebone covered in white cotton. Um, that is not showing up at all. Okay, um, so I think this ought to do the trick. Uh, I hope I got enough. If I need to go back and get more, I always can. Um, but it'll essentially go like this. So I think we should get to the next. After a bit of experimenting, this is what I have come up with. Um, I based it off of the uh, reference photo, which I'm going to put up again. It's composed of these three hoops. I tried to do it with four hoops, but it was a little bit too big. Um, so it's composed out of these three hoops of the synthetic whalebone. This one here at the end is the smallest, and then this one is bigger, um, and then this one at this end is the same size as the small one, but it's got this extra piece sewn onto the top um, to make it about the same size as this one. Now the reason that this here is um, sewn onto the top and not just another big one is because this can move around a little bit now, um, and when I tried it on, this actually wanted to go like this, and that gives a much better shape when this is kind of leaning that way. So I was curious about why it didn't, wasn't just a bigger thing, and I believe that is why. Um, so this is, I think, the design I'm going to go for. Um, it now only, and this one is uh, good enough to just use. I don't need to, this is, you know, it was a mock-up, but it's also good enough to be the real thing. Um, it's nicely collapsible, and also since it's made out of this synthetic whalebone, it can, you know, be packed away into a nice tight space. Um, so yeah, all now that remains is to make the other one, and I will record that process. Um, so I'm going to start out with this. I still have this other small hoop that was originally on the end of this one. So I'm going to start out with this one. So I'm going to first of all remove these bits of tape from here. Alright, 
This has been removed, so I've got one of these. I need to make another one this size. So I'm just going to take this whale bone here and simply measure this out. Oh, and you are probably going to want to know how big I decided to make this. It's going to vary. Um, the size you're going to want to make is going to vary a little bit, depending on how big your sleeves are. Uh, and then I'm going to cut this slightly longer than it needs to be, because I'm going to doctor it a little bit. Um, yeah. So now what I'm going to do is extend the boning from its sheath and just cut off a little bit of it, maybe half an inch. Like that. Push it back in, so now I've got some fabric without boning that I can sew through. Uh, and this is... I have not actually checked to see how big any of this, these things are. So the short ones are uh, 20 and a half inches long. Um, and then I will, I'm not sure how long the big one is. So that's actually quite, lo quite a circumference, 20 and a half inches. Um, So then you're just gonna take this and sew it together so it makes a hoop. I've not actually been making sure to position myself so the camera can see this. I have my iPad balanced on top of my typewriter right now because I am too cheap to buy actual camera equipment. Now we've got our two smaller pieces. It's time to put the extra thing on top. So, to see how long this actually needs to be. Might it be better? All right, so that's less flattering for me, but it you, does offer you guys a better view of what I'm doing. So my vanity will take a back seat. So, I'm just going to measure around this to see how long I'm going to need to cut it. So that is 14 and a half inches. Do I have enough of this left? I hope so. I did not buy enough of this whale bone. I should have... I bought four yards of it, I think. If you want to make them, your bustles the same size as I'm making them, you should probably buy five yards. Um, luckily, I have some black whalebone. Um, I prefer it to be in white, just in case I ever want to wear this underneath a white sleeve, but uh, for now the black will do. Um, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So I've cut that out. I'm going to thread the needle. I'm doubling up the thread just to make it stronger. Now I'm going to hold this against here just to see approximately where this needs to attach. There. I'm sorry, I can't pick this up to give you guys a better view. 
Good, so they're in there. But, uh, oh shoot. do that part and sew this on that's one side done I love my little stork scissors. My mother's had a pair for ages and um, I was very excited to get mine. I actually got them when I was a senior in high school and I was using them, I used them for my Halloween costume because I was going as Adelaide of the Pasture. Um, Halloween. Bird! Um, from the um, cartoon miniseries Over the Garden Wall, which was uh, a cartoon that I actually quite enjoyed. I'm not usually a cartoony type of person, but I quite enjoyed that one. Um, Alright. Tangents aside, got these two hoops now with this one with its uh, little added thing. There. So now we just need to make one big one. And I'm gonna have to use the uh, the black wrapped bone for this, and it needs to be. Oh, I dropped it. It needs to be twenty five and a half inches. the chair. All right, that should do it. Let's just trim off the edge a little bit. And we'll use some black thread. So get a new needle. Handy little Victorian sewing etui. It's a little flap here and a pouch where you can keep, I don't know, a needle threader or something, a little pocket for needles there, another little pouch here, original thimble. I never use a thimble while sewing. I know I probably should, but I just don't like the feeling of them. And then put your pins in here. Rolls up into a wee little ball or tube, cute little pumpkin. Um, what was I looking for? Oh yeah, I thought I had a threaded needle in here. Oh. All that and the needle is right here. Let's use black thread, at least try to match the threads. All right, so now we have the structure. So now all that remains is to put the tapes on to hold it together. So I've just been using this twill tape. Uh, that's been working fine. I don't have a ton of it left, so I may have to use something else for the um, 
top part, but I'm gonna use it at least, I can at least use it for the bottom part. So, we take the uh, pieces, hold them like this, and then I'm going to, ooh, first of all, okay. cut off that raw edge. Then I'm going to I can show this. I'm gonna fold this edge under like this and then put the folded down part on the bottom here. And then wrap it around like so. I really hope you can see or at least surmise, surmise what I'm doing. Um, like so, and then I'm, I'm covering the seams with the tape. So it'll come out like that, and then I'm just gonna sew it on here, here, here and here. Ugh. I haven't put a note in the thread. I'm using double thread just to make it a little bit stronger. And I'm going to uh, back stitch the tape onto the uh, bones. To a place in which I can no longer tie off the thread. There we go. So I got a telephone call from my mother, so I'm not quite sure exactly where I left off. Um, but uh, I'm just going to continue with stitching this all together. Just got one more to do. Got a new needle and thread. So let's. Uh, just continue. This is what we have. Stitched there, here and there, all across. So we've got this, but it's still quite loose and floppy, so we need to add these tapes, or this tape. Um, I'm just gonna use this. I think there is enough of it. Come back here. I'm hungry, what time is it? It's five o'clock. maintain a proper posture. You're going to want to fold this over again. Just a little bit like that. And you're going to take it here and it's you're going to put it directly on top. And you're going to have this little folded over piece 
hanging off the edge just a little bit like this and I will explain why later like that and you're gonna sew it on And there's no need to backstitch this top part on. Um, it's not gonna be under an intense amount of pressure, so it's fine just being stitched on normally. Just gonna measure and see how long this part needs to be. inches. I've done something wrong. Do you see what it is? <sighs> do, 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 do. to do this. Fold this over. You don't need to worry about leaving a uh, tab hanging off on this side. Looks about right. the structure of the sleeve bustle is finished. All we need to do now is sew hooks on here, on this tab, and, uh, and on here, and then the corresponding eyes onto your shirt. Um, now, this is about how to attach it. I was a little bit confused at first about how they would attach. Um, I could think of three possibilities. One, that the tapes came up here and they somehow like attached around the neck but that seemed incredibly unlikely so i didn't really pursue it um another possibility was that they um somehow strapped around the the arm and that's how they were attached and they were just onto your arm um but that also seemed quite unlikely um so i ended up going with the um what seemed to me the most likely possibility is that they just um hooked onto the actual shirt or onto the bodice um, at the seams. So that's what I've gone with. Um, I'm just using plain hooks and eyes. I'm not going to um, I'm not going to film the process of sewing the eyes into the shirt because um, you all know how to sew on a, an eye, and um, it uh, will vary depending on where you want it for every shirt. So I'm not going to record that, um, but I am going to show how these need to be put on. So you're going to put them on like this, with the hook facing upwards and back. Um, then you're just going to sew it on. Okay. 
this needle is already threaded with black thread, so even though it won't match quite correctly, I'm going to do this because I am hungry and I want to finish this. And with that, the sleeve bustles are done. All that remains now is to show a uh, before and after scene with the shirt on, which I will do after I have eaten. And here we have the finished result. I think it came out quite nicely. Um, as you can see, my sleeves are much more puffy, and I think that it's really cool. You can't really see the, you can kind of see the lines of the uh, bone, but um, for the most part, it just kind of gives a really nice full puffy look um, and doesn't look too artificial. So I'm very, very happy with the way they turned out. Um, and any of you end up making these, please tell me how it went. Um, send me pictures, I would love that. Uh, yeah.